Welcome back to Broncos Weekend. We've covered the Broncos. We know how they're prepping. But what about the Falcons? Well, Steve Atwater caught up with sports reporter Allison Mastrangelo from WSB-TV in Atlanta. She used to cover the Broncos here in Denver. Now she's in the South. We're getting some perspective on what awaits the Broncos. All right. Good afternoon, Allison. And thank you for joining me on the show today to dis discuss the Atlanta Falcons-Denver Broncos game. So, after the Falcons got off to an 0-5 start, uh, Dan Quinn, Falcons' former head coach, he was, he was let go. Raheem Morris, defense coordinator, he's taken over as the interim head coach. And they, they're 2-1 and one in the last three weeks. You know, what's the overall mood of the team right now with the season? You know, having changed coaches and not gotten off to the start that, you know, they would have liked to have gotten off to. Yeah, it was definitely rough in the beginning, to say the least, especially when they were so close and having those brutal losses in the fourth, you know, quarter in the final seconds of the game, you know, Todd Gurley scoring when he shouldn't be scoring. It was tough for sure. Now right. they're back in the win column. You feel a different momentum. You feel like Matt Ryan speaking positively, Julio Jones, like everyone is starting to get their swagger. Like they've always felt like a couple of those losses. They should, they should have been like wins. They weren't like blowout losses. They were always just right there. And now they're finally starting to see it together. Well, they can keep going, get some more wins for Raheem Morris as he's trying you know, audition for a head coaching job as well. And, you know, I like to see it all come together. No one, everyone keeps talking about, you know, tanking for Trevor Lawrence. This team doesn't want to tank. Right, right. The, Nobody, no, no team wants to do that, right? No, and you know why the fans want to see that? The players don't, and the players, like, you, you're not ever watching a game being like, oh man, it looks like they don't want to win, or they're still right. like, oh, they're always right in it until the end. And, and I've never seen so many games just so heartbreaking in heartbreaking fashion. You're just like, just when you think they're not going to lose, they do. But I, I think they've turned the corner. I like to think they've turned the corner. Now, back in training camp, there are concerns about Todd Gurley's lingering arthritic condition in his left knee. Looking again at the NFL leaderboard, he's third in the league in rushing yards, second in rushing touchdowns. How has his knee been holding up? And, you know, how has he been able to be so productive this year? He's been very productive, and, and honestly, he's been great. The only time he hasn't been great is when he wasn't supposed to score. Uh, <laughs> you know, that yeah, was really I remember important. that play. Yes, <laughs> in fact, yes. He told him in the huddle, like, don't score. <laughs> I know, and we all asked immediately, and they're like, oh, you know, I kind of remind them. You hear the audio the next day, you're like, oh, my gosh. You <laughs> then. So, but I understand, too, it's like, you're like, wait, why am I all of a sudden able to score? But anyway, no, he's been very, very productive. The, the run game has been great for them. They've had some great blocking. It is more now finding that rhythm of the dynamic of getting run past everything going at the same time. The offensive line, knock on wood, has been also somewhat healthy as well. Last year, they battled a lot of injuries. When, and when Todd Gurley's getting in a rhythm, they have, you know, a lot of depth as well. And uh, running backs, they're able to kind of move him around. He doesn't need to get, you know, uh, 60 reps or snaps in a game. Um, but when he does, he's getting those quality ones. He's able to punch it in and score for the team. Yeah. Well, hey, I really appreciate you coming on with me, Allison. And... I wish your Dirty Birds good luck. I mean, not really, because I, I, we need the Broncos. We need another win here. But it yeah. should be a really good game. And, uh, again, I thank you so much for, for spending time with me on the show. And I hope you and your, your loved ones are all healthy. Thank you. I appreciate that. Same to you. Our thanks to Allison for taking some time with us this week. When we come back on Broncos weekend, Alexis Perry is back outside by Mile High Monument cooking up some tasty tailgate treats. Plus, Steve Atwater returns for his keys to the game. Don't go anywhere.